Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to Equilinox. In the last episode, we managed to save our tiny little magic forest from withering away when we discovered that our sheep may have been eating a hole inside the grasslands. So we unlocked each and every last one of the grasslands plants, and now we have tons of flowers growing here. Hopefully they'll be able to fill the gaps in between and keep all of these trees growing strong. We have quite a few of them selected as our breeding species, so I don't think we have to worry about these dying away anytime soon. And we can turn our attentions over to different parts of the world, where our birds are coming along quite nicely. So in the last episode, we actually discovered that we have blue chickens now. And because the chickens don't really like this area, I thought it would be a good idea to move our blue chickens back over here with our chicken army. So this is where they're going to thrive now. They're doing okay, right? The environment is a little bit low, and it's probably because of these trees. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if it's because of this one. Let's go ahead and remove this birch tree and see if that makes it happier. You know, Pinto seems to be doing just fine now, and he even has a little baby named Chi. So we're already up to... Generation 29? Oh my gosh, they must be counting from our previous chicken army. I mean, they've been around here for quite some time, too. I think the chickens were the second animal that we placed in this world, so the chicken army has been around for a long, long time. Now they're going to have a brand new look, though, and pretty soon they're going to have some brand new cousins, too. So today we're going to try to evolve the sparrow from the chickens as well, and I thought maybe it would be a good idea to try to do that over here with these chickens. I know they're not going to last very long. Oh my gosh, Ursula the chicken. That is an adorable name for a chicken. It would have been even more fitting if it was for one of our ducks, but of course they end up passing away. We'll have to see if we can add them back into the world too. Maybe even over here on this tiny little island, because that should give them plenty of these water plants to eat. And that was where we struggled last time. But first the sparrows, before all of these chickens end up dying away. Let's see what we need to do to unlock the sparrows. I'm pretty sure that they needed an area that's known as the woodland. And they also need to eat some barley. So we're going to have to figure out how we can evolve that. And I believe they added a brand new search system into this. Let's see if we can find it. Yeah, I guess we can just type barley right here. There we go, and then it'll bring it right up, so it evolves from the heather. And it looks like we only need to set up an area with some forest trees to do so. So that should be pretty easy, because I'm pretty sure we could just do that straight over here. All of these cedar trees and the tall trees around our bouncing little boar. That should definitely work, right? Yep, the barley can start evolving right away. The boar is still having an excellent time out here, and it looks like our apple trees are still coming along pretty nicely too. I'm going to go ahead and keep selective breeding these special ones. They almost have, like, blue-colored leaves. Those are really gorgeous. We actually started evolving our sheep over here the other day, too. So now these sheep at our magic forest have a slightly golden tint. And I believe Admiral's family is also growing a little cyan tint to them. It's very, very hard to see because we didn't have too many points to work with. But as we keep adding that color to their wool, it'll be fun to see the shades slowly progress. Oh no, and it looks like some of our boar are getting hungry too. Oh poor Abel, he just can't find any apples? I mean, there are literally apples right in front of you. There you go, little guy. Still feeling hungry? Did that not feed him, or does he just need more? Maybe we need to plant a few more of these apple trees after all. Maybe they just need some more down here in the main valley. It does actually look like our valley is starting to wither a little bit too. We have tons of heather over here, but the grass is looking pretty pale. Maybe we're going to want to turn our attentions to this side of the world soon, but for now it looks like our barley is ready to go. So let's go ahead and read a little bit more about this before we place it down, just so we'll know that it's going to be safe by our wobbly trees. A grassy plant which grows tasty seeds. The small plant grows in woodland biomes and is a great food source for the smallest animals and birds. Can be grown together with herbs. Alright, so assuming that we start placing some plants down that would give us the woodland biome, I'm sure that the barley is going to thrive there too. Suitable biomes are only in the forest and the woodlands. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay, because I think our wobbly tree actually needs to stay in the grasslands. 
and the sparrows are going to need these wobbly trees to build their nests inside. Let's just see if they'll be okay inside the other habitats too. It says it's only suitable on the grasslands. Huh, maybe this is going to be a little bit more difficult than I thought. Maybe we'll have to set up a different area for them after all. I wonder if there's any other type of tree that we have that the sparrows could build their nests in. I don't know, but I guess for now, let's just see what sort of plants will help us spread the woodland biome. I want to say that it was the buttercups. Yeah, the buttercups right here will help us spread it, and so will the sycamore tree too. So let's see if we can plop a couple of these buttercups right around our chickens. The environment looks pretty good for them so far, so maybe this will be just enough to give the woodland some roots to grow. Actually, I wonder if maybe we should start moving our wobbly trees a bit more to the side? Maybe that would help our chickens survive longer? It just depends how expensive it is to transplant these things. Yeah, it's not gonna be cheap, but I guess we could give it a try. Oh my gosh! Oh, our tree just died! All of those points for nothing! And that one too? Oh, maybe we shouldn't do this then. Maybe this area is just really poorly suited to the wobbly trees. It must be because we don't have any rocks out there or anything. Oh my gosh, what a waste of points. Well, let's just leave that one last wobbly tree there then. Otherwise, we're not going to have any trees for our poor little sparrows. Our chickens are still not so happy with us. But at least our field is wide open now. Plenty of sky all around them, just as our little chickens like it. So let's see what the biome says now. We're at about 26% on the woodland biome over here. That's actually not that bad. We only needed about 30% to start evolving our sparrows. So maybe this would be a good area for us to plop down our barley. It might be able to survive here now. We'll place it right over here next to our buttercups and see if it takes. Whoa! Okay, this place is clearly not ready. All right, let's try shifting everything over a little bit. If we want to bring our wobbly trees over here, we just need to set up some stones. So let's go ahead and place them down right next to all of these grass tufts. That should be enough to keep our wobbly trees alive over on this side of the grasslands. Then we can focus on bringing the woodlands straight to our chickens. So come on over here, wobbly tree. Let's cross our fingers that you're not going to wither away as fast as the others. So far, so good. The environment is pretty awful, and I think that's because it doesn't have any birds around it. That was another thing that the wobbly tree really liked. But it should survive long enough to spread a couple of little baby trees around, a couple of little wobbly tree saplings. And look at how happy our birds are already over here. Our chickens are spreading once more. Ah, and our blue chickens have really taken off over on this side of the world. Furball the chicken, Austin the chicken, and we have Dirty Harry. Dirty Harry the blue chicken as well. Alright, so you guys are doing just fine. I guess those birch trees are staying out of your territory. And now that we have the wobbly trees way over here, we shouldn't have to worry about them creeping into your land either. So we can just focus solely on the woodlands now. So what else spreads the woodland biome? We have plenty of the buttercups in our land, so maybe we should look toward the oregano next? That would probably count as an herb too, wouldn't it? And the barley needed the herb to grow next to. And the sycamore tree. Do you think maybe birds can use that for nests? Ah, uh, yes. So we could use the sycamore tree for the birds to build their nests in instead, and that would be perfect for the biome that they like. For that matter, maybe we could even think about putting our sparrows way over here, since this is where our sycamore trees are to begin with. We still do have a couple of them set up around here, speckled around amidst all of the other trees too. So assuming that there wouldn't be any issues between them and the boar or them and the sheep, maybe we'll think about moving our birds over here. But we still have to focus on our chickens just to unlock them. So let's see what we need to do to unlock the oregano. We need some mushrooms nearby. And we also need to give the grass tuff the mud green color. That should probably be easy enough. Yeah, these are so much less expensive than the chicken colors and the sheep colors. So we'll go ahead and change this one over to mud green. And I'm sure it's going to start spreading those in no time. Maybe we should even think about selecting a couple of these grass tufts, if we can find some more who are nice and super healthy. 
This one's looking pretty good, so we'll go ahead and change this one too. Right over to that mud green color. I think that said it only costs like 7 points to change it over to the natural green color. I'm not surprised though, with how fast these grass tufts seem to disappear. It would be a pretty big bummer to spend half a million points on it. And speaking of special colors, we also unlocked this kind of like a midnight blue kelp the other day. And it's still going along strong, right on the very outskirts of our water ecosystem. I believe I read that the developer has added some new types of fish too, so maybe we'll get the chance to unlock those sometime soon. Now the other thing it said it's going to need is some mushrooms. And it looks like the last of our grass tuft has passed away. So are these new grass tufts the right color? They might be. Yeah, it looks like they're mud green, so go ahead and selective breed those for us. I guess all of these darker colored grass tufts are the ones that we need, so we'll go ahead and breed all of those straight away. Honestly though, with how many have popped up in the meantime, I don't think they're going to be dying off anytime soon. So let's see if we can find some mushrooms. I'm going to assume that any old mushroom will do. Oh, but they don't like this area for some reason. Maybe it's because they do need the trees. Well, hopefully this will be close enough. Oh, a strange buttercup was just born? Yes, right on the very outskirts of our brand new woodland. I'm surprised that it's even surviving out here. It looks pretty barren, but it's still struggling along. And it's hard to see what color it's going to be from here. Oh my gosh, is it actually brown? Oh, it's going to look like a dead buttercup way off on the barren outskirts of the woodland. Gosh, this is going to be like the no man's zone between the woodland and our fall forest. A dead and barren graveyard to scare creatures from crawling to the highest peaks. But I guess that would make this place all the more special. So once we do finally find a creature to live up there with the trees, we'll have to make them appear quite hardy and elusive. Alright though, hopefully those mushrooms are going to be close enough for some of our grass tufts to evolve. Yep, it looks like we can start evolving the oregano straight from this, and that's actually going to be the last one of the plants that we can evolve from the grass tuft. Now the wild mint was really, really difficult to evolve because these grass tufts disappear so quickly. So we might want to make sure that we have a couple more lined up. In fact, maybe we should start selective breeding these while we can. The ones that are closest to our little button mushrooms. Just one more tick away. We must be just around the corner now. Just a few more points to go, so let's go ahead and speed it up. There we go. Now our oregano is ready to place into the world too. So let's go ahead and see what it takes to make this thing happy. A very fragrant small herb with little white flowers. The oregano plant is able to grow in barren soil and spreads the woodland biome, so it acts as a good starting plant for creating the woodland ecosystem. It can also be a good source of food for smaller creatures. Excellent, so the oregano plant is kind of like the grass tufts of the grasslands, so that should really help our woodland biome spread. The only problem is, it does prefer to be in an area where there are woodland trees, so that means we're going to have to start growing these sycamore trees first. And we don't have they are like species either. One thing after the next. They like herbs. So if we grow them both at the same time, do you think that'll balance itself out? It seems like it might. Yeah, I think these two are going to be pretty happy now. Yes, the oregano is nice and healthy, and our sycamore tree is as well. So we have our oregano, we have our trees growing that our sparrows should be able to nest in. So that means it should be time for us to place our barley down too, and then maybe consider getting rid of all of this wheat. As long as the chickens can survive off of the barley, then we want them to focus on that instead. Oh, and look how much the barley likes this place now. 100% suitable biome. So maybe this is going to work out after all. As long as we make sure that the barley is nice and close to where our chickens actually are, I don't think they're going to have too much of a problem finding food. Apparently the issue with our duck was that we had placed him a little bit too far away from the water. Each of these animals has a home area that extends from the place where we set them down, so that's where all of their favorite things need to be. And while they can search for food beyond their home, it is definitely more of a struggle. We witnessed that ourselves when all of our ducks passed last time. So assuming that I probably place the chickens somewhere around here, I'm sure at least one of these barley plants will be somewhere inside their circle. 
so I just want to make sure that they've grown enough before we start taking away the wheat. We don't want our chickens to start starving either. Oh, granted, quite a few of them look like they're pretty full right now, so maybe this would be our best shot. It's just like the grass tops way up by our forest with the apple trees. We'll just select one of these wheat plants, and then I think we should be able to erase all of them. Everything inside the circle is going to be gone. We can leave a little bit of wheat way on the outskirts, I guess, though we don't want it spreading back into this land. If you guys can just survive on the barley, that would be excellent. So which one should we watch? Maybe Harvey because he's so young? Or maybe this blue chicken right here? Are one of you going to eat this barley plant? They're pecking around it. They seem pretty interested. Come on, one of you has to be curious. They keep coming straight up to this thing and then walking right away. Are you going to be the lucky one? Go ahead, give it a taste. Oh, it looks like somebody ate it, actually. They ate the seeds off of it instead of the entire plant. But I can't tell which one it was. None of them have the ability to change them over to the sparrows yet. They have to be eating it, right? Maybe they just need to eat more than one. Then it'll count as, yes, that way it'll actually count as their diet. Not just like some silly little snack that they happened to find while they were traveling. So how fitting that our chosen chicken end up being one of the blue ones after all. Grace doesn't have that much time left on her, but with the way that our chickens are munching on the rest of these barley plants, I think that pretty much any of them will be able to unlock us the sparrows soon. It is going pretty fast too, so maybe if we speed up the time... Oh my goodness, and we're already on year four? Gosh, time flies in this world. Four years and this is what we've accomplished. Happy bouncing boar, apple guardians, magic forests. Of course, there is still a lot more to unlock and plenty more to see. But I'm pretty happy with the way that this place is shaping out so far. I think Grace is actually going to be able to struggle on long enough to give us our sparrow too. Just a little bit more to go. There we go. Oh my gosh, are you the tiny little baby sparrow? Oh, it is so precious. Well, let's go ahead and read about our sparrow too, before we decide to place it down next to our sycamore trees, just in case we do want to transfer it way over here with our boar instead. What sort of things does the sparrow like? A small forest bird. The sparrow flies around and occasionally lands on the branches of nearby trees. Sparrows build nests and lay eggs in the nest in order to reproduce. This bird has no trouble living in almost any part of the world as long as there are trees available. Uh, that's a good sign, so it should be fine way over here. And I'll bet that we could actually plop another group way over here by our boards as well. So let's go ahead and pick up you little guy if we can, and then we'll drop you right next to all of our big sycamore trees. Oh my gosh, off already? Oh, look how fast they swoop around in the skies. I wonder if the sycamore tree has grown enough for it to actually start building a nest yet. Oh my goodness, I can't even begin to click on you. It looks like he's doing fine though. Honestly, flying around like this, they don't have a care in the world. Do they not have names though? Maybe they reproduce that quickly just like our fish. It is so hard to catch these things. I guess I'm going to have to wait until our sparrow decides to land in one of the trees. And this one looks like it might be grown now too. It has all of those beautiful leaves fluttering down, so it must be ready for a little sparrow to use it for nests. Yeah, looks like the birds don't have any names, just like the fish in the streams. Oh, but we could make toucans and doves from the sparrows? Maybe it's time for us to turn our attentions to the jungles of the world. I know that one of our tasks is actually to make some jungle mushrooms, so maybe that would be a good thing for us to focus on too. The tall mushrooms and the jungle mushrooms as well. Oh my gosh, it is so fun to watch them fly through the world though. They're adding a whole new layer to our ecosystem. Now we have creatures on the ground in the sea and feathers flying through the skies. Oh, is it going to build a nest? Oh my gosh, are those the first tiny little twigs of your nest? I wonder if that's actually as big as it gets? No, it must be gathering twigs to build something grand. No wonder it has such a wide range. 
I'll bet these sparrows could fly all the way over to the forest to scavenge for nesting material. Gotta build a good nest if you want to attract a mate after all. Well, we'll check back in on our little sparrow in just a moment. And I think for now, I'm going to plop another group of sparrows over here. We need some fluttering friends flying through the sky on this side of the world too. And it looks like this place is perfect for the sparrows. Oh my gosh, those baby sparrows. I forgot how adorable they are when they're tiny. We should see what sort of colors we can change them into as well. Since this is a pretty special part of the world, maybe we could make them look just as unique. Ooh, but we could change them into gold or cyan, just like we're doing for our sheep over by the magic forest. Interesting. So I guess we could have some little sparrow friends for our sheep as well. But I think for now, maybe we could try changing these sparrows over to the white color. I wonder if that would actually help us unlock the doves? Before we change it, let's just go ahead and see. Yeah, of course, the doves need white feathers in order to evolve. So by changing the sparrow over to the white color, we're kind of getting a head start on the evolution too. And you know, now that we actually have sycamore trees over here, I wonder if this would be a better place for us to set down our ducks. If we put them right next to the water, they should have plenty of these water plants to keep them fat, and they'll have the trees to keep them happy. So let's see what they think of this area now, if it'll be more suitable to them. Yes, they have both of their like species in this area, and while it's not really their favorite biome, it is 100% suitable, so I think they should be able to survive here quite nicely this time. They have plenty of feathered friends to keep them company too, our blue chickens, our normal chickens, the last few survivors of the bravest branch of the chicken army. There aren't many chickens who'd be willing to dive headfirst into a forest like this, so honestly, I'm surprised they survived this long. But is our little sparrow done building their nest? Oh my gosh, it looks like they are. And there's even a tiny little sparrow egg inside. Oh my goodness, we're already going to have more sparrows hopping around this place too. I wonder how long it takes for these things to hatch. It seems like the sparrow actually built the nest pretty quickly. They're still swooping around though, diving into every last sycamore tree they find. I wonder if they'll build more nests? Oh my gosh! Oh no! Oh my gosh, did you just take a leap of faith? Not quite strong enough to do any flying just yet, little guy. And it looks like Mama Sparrow has come over to lay some more eggs as well. Oh my gosh, this place is going to be alive with birds in just a few moments. So let's see if maybe the nests over on this side of the world have started growing too. Do we have any little nests popping up in the sycamore trees? There are a couple here that you could work with. Is this going to be your home base? Let's see if it decides to leave a couple of those twigs behind, because it seems like it does take time for them to build their nest. Nope, he's not quite sure about this one, unfortunately. And I don't see any... Oh, wait a second! Oh, you decided to use one of the apple trees? Interesting. So I guess it's not just the sycamore trees and the wobbly trees. The apple trees are also pretty good spots for nesting. Oh, and there goes another little baby. And I think it might have the white color that we gave it. It's hard to see right now. It kind of looks like it has a little eggshell on its head. But I'm pretty sure that white cap should mean that it will have nice white feathers when it grows. Ah, uh, there we go. And a bird in the hand. That was the task for the sparrows. I was just going to say too, I could have sworn that there was a task we were supposed to complete with the sparrows. So now we finish this. We have a fully built and filled nest of eggs in the world. Oh my gosh, filled indeed. Is that five different sparrow eggs? That is going to be one seriously stuffed nest. No wonder these sparrows end up jumping ship so soon. And look at this, our little duck is waddling around too. Well, we'll check on you in just a moment because we have some rewards to claim. And interestingly enough, it looks like it's going to unlock us some jungle grass. So maybe we're not so far off from starting our first jungle. I think that would probably be a pretty good thing for us to focus on next. We'll just have to find a good place to set it up. And with how much extra space we have around here, we could basically choose any corner of the world. 
I feel like maybe a bit further away from our other biomes would be best. I'm sure that whatever's in the jungle is going to be very unique, so it might need some extra space to spread its roots. And we even completed the Totally Quackers quest too. That must be for having some super happy ducks in the world. That's one of our chickens right there, searching out for the barley. But gosh, our ducks have never been happier. So we are completing a bird quest left and right today. Let's see what we unlocked from that task as well. And then we'll read the jungle task before we end the episode. Oh my gosh, the ducks are giving us jungle rocks. Yeah, I think it's pretty clear that the jungle is going to be next on the list. So in the jungle. Use the jungle grass to start creating a new jungle biome. Unlock the jungle plant to improve the biome and get the area ready for a mighty jungle ecosystem. So it just needs us to have 20 jungle grass in the world and 5 jungle plants in the world too. Then we'll unlock the vine tree, the mighty jungle task, and plenty of points to play around with it. So yeah, maybe it's time for us to start evolving some jungle mushrooms. Tropical mushrooms too. And now that we know that we can unlock the Toucan in Equilinox, I bet that would be really fun to see soaring through the rainforest. So let me know what you guys think. Do you think maybe we should place our rainforest over here somewhere? Or jungle, rather? Maybe on the other side of the valley? It'll be closer to the water, so I suppose it depends what sorts of trees and plants we need to grow. I'm not sure what altitude it will prefer. We have some very high peaks over here too, and then we have some low rolling valleys on the other side of the world, far away from any bodies of water. So if you guys have an idea of where the best place for a jungle would be, then feel free to let me know. And that's what we'll focus on in the next episode. For now, we'll leave all of our beautiful sparrows to flutter through the skies, all the baby sparrows to go jumping off of their trees. Maybe just one last time, we'll go back here and see if all of our baby white sparrows have grown up. Yes, you can see them clearly now. Oh my gosh, look how gorgeous they are. You guys are going to make some pretty excellent doves. Our sheep seem to be pretty happy with their new neighbors too, which is all well and good. As apple guardians, they wouldn't let just any creatures build their nest in those branches. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!